Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, contributing editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. You might have heard some people talking about rule-based design. Sounds like a proclamation from a schoolmaster, doesn't it? Well, my simple-minded understanding of it is this. Instead of designing something with fixed dimensions, you design a configurable part, and you let certain relationships determine those flexible parameters. One example of that might be a two-hole bracket that becomes a single-hole bracket when its width can no longer accommodate two holes, or a part that can be regenerated with different thickness depending on the pressure or the load it's expected to endure. In Autodesk Inventor 2011, there is a feature called iLogic marked by the icon of a little equation. That's what you might use to create rules for your design. Let's take a very simple part and introduce some rules to see how it works. Take this part. It has some chamfered or beveled corners. I'm just going to create a custom parameter that allows me to say yes, includes the chamfers, or no, don't include that feature with a simple true-false selection. Now that I've added true and false options to my chamfer setup, I'm going to add a rule. Essentially, write a set of instructions in a programming language. I'm going to pick the if-then expression as my basic format, then replace that placeholder expression by picking the chamfers from my user-created parameters. Now remember, that's a parameter I created. It didn't come with a model. Now I'm going to say, if the chamfer's value is true, then keep the chamfer feature active. In other words, keep it true. Else, if the chamfer value is false, then keep the chamfer inactive, or set it as false. Well, that's pretty much it as far as rule buildings goes. Now let's try it out. Now let's try something else. I'm going to set up the height of this piece to be two possible values, 0 0.5 inch and 0 0.25 inch. Now I'm going to write that instruction that says, if the height is 0 0.5 inch, then keep the holes feature active. I'll keep it true. Or else, if it becomes 0 0.25 inch, don't keep the holes. In other words, its status should be set to false. I did that simply because I know that at that small height, the piece doesn't have enough room to accommodate holes. OK, so let's try out the rules. So using a similar method, I also created a piece that has three different mass properties and settings. So that, depending on the mass I select, the piece can change its thickness or readjust the radius of its rounded edges. Now, a few words about these instructions, or the syntax that you use, the way you build these if-then rules, is in programming language. So it certainly helps if you're familiar with programming, but you don't have to be a programmer. In my case, it did require some patience and time because I'm completely green to programming or writing in that kind of syntax. But I'd say the results are well worth the effort. Here are just a few of them for your pleasure.
Till next time, this is Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering Magazine, learning to be logical the iLogic way.